uh, back here with lesson six of God's attributes, attribute number five. God is omniscient, he is all-knowing. And in this lesson, we're gonna look at an excerpt from Debbie McDaniel. She writes about the omniscience of God. We're gonna look at an, an excerpt from A.W. Pink's book on the omniscience of God. We're gonna look at an article by Don Stewart that asks the question, does God know everything? And we're gonna examine some scriptures in that way. And uh, we are going to take a look at the idea that his knowledge is denied by the wicked. And we're gonna look at the idea that they believe God does not see their sin. And we know that God sees everyone's sin. God knows the evil that people think. God is perfect in judgment. Humanity should take the warning seriously. And the Lord searches every heart. And then we're going to wrap it up with a summary and ask a couple of questions and give the answers to those questions. Attribute number five, God is omniscient. He is all-knowing, which means he knows everything. He can be everywhere at the same time, and he never sleeps or slumbers. He's aware every moment of every day exactly what we're up against. He knows our way and is with us always. There is no place on earth we can go that he does not see and know of. And that's from the article, uh, 15 Amazing Attributes of God and What They Mean and Why They Matter. Um, so it's on BibleStudyTools.com. God is omniscient. He knows everything, says A.W. Pink. Everything possible, everything actual, all events, all creatures. God, the past, present, and the future. He is perfectly acquainted with every detail in, in the life of every being in heaven, in earth, and in hell. He knoweth what is in the darkness, Dan 22. Uh, nothing escapes his notice. Nothing can be hidden from him. Nothing is forgotten by him. Well, may we say with the psalmist, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Psalm 139, verse 6. His knowledge is perfect. He never errs, never changes, never overlooks anything. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hebrews 4.13 Yes, such, the, such is the God with whom we have to do. And that's from A.W. Pink, The Attributes of God, published in 1919. Uh, article by Don Stewart now, Does God Know Everything? The Bible teaches that God is all-knowing or omniscient. The word omniscient comes from two Latin words, om, omnis, signifying all, and scientia, signifying knowledge. When we say that God is omniscient, we mean that he has perfect knowledge of all things. He does not have to learn anything, and he has not forgotten anything. God does not have to reason things out, find out things, or learn them gradually. He knows everything that has happened and everything that will happen. God also knows every potential thing that might happen. God even knows the, those things that humankind ha has not yet discovered. The knowledge is absolute and unacquired. The omniscience of God means that he has perfect knowledge, perfect understanding, and perfect wisdom as to how as to how to apply the knowledge. And that was by Don Stewart. He is the God of knowledge. In the prayer of Hannah, the mother of Samuel, we have the revealed truth that God is a God of knowledge. 1 Samuel 2.3 says, 
talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of, out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. It is by God that our actions are weighed, folks, not by some other person. All right. The psalmist wrote 139, verse 1 through 6. A psalm of David, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou hast my down sitting, hast my, thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassed my path and my lying down art and my lying down and art art acquainted with all my ways for there is not a word in my tongue but lo O Lord thou knowest it all together verse 5 says thou hast beset me and before me and laid thine hand upon me such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is high I cannot attain unto it he has infinite knowledge, folks. Psalm 147, verse 5 says, Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The evangelist John wrote, 1 John 3, 20, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. He has known things from eternity God had has had all knowledge for all eternity. Acts 15, 18 says, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. His knowledge is without limit. God has, There is no limit on God's knowledge other than the limit that he knows everything there is to know. The Bible clearly teaches that God's knowledge is without limit. The apostle, the apostle Paul declares in Romans eleven thirty three, oh the depth of the riches both of wisdom, and both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments, and His ways past finding out. In Proverbs we read Proverbs fifteen verse three, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The psalmist declared one forty seven verse five. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. It is not like human knowledge. The knowledge that God had, the knowledge that God has is not like the limited knowledge of human beings. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The psalmist wrote, Psalm 50, verse 21, These things hast thou done, and I keep silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set thee in an order Set, set them in order before thine eyes. His knowledge is perfect. The knowledge of God is perfect. In the book of Job, a man named Elihu said, Job thirty-seven sixteen, Dost thou know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him which is perfect knowledge? Of him which is perfect in knowledge. No one can teach him, because the knowledge of God is perfect. No one can teach him anything. Job 21.22 says, Shall any teach God knowledge, seeing he judgeth those that are high? Paul stated the same truth. Romans 11.34 says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord? or who hath been his counselor. Neither does God have to investigate anything. Job 11.11 11 says, For he knoweth vain men, he seeth wickedness also. He, will he not then consider it? 
He knows what is happening, happening on the earth, folks. Scripture says that God is aware of what is presently happening on the earth. Exodus 3, 7 says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. He also knows things from the past. Acts 15, 18 says, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. He predicts events also. Because God knows everything that will happen, this allows him to predict the future. Uh, Isaiah 46, 10, declaring at the end, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand forever and I will do my pleasure. Now let's not, whenever we hear this, I will do my pleasure, you know, generally speaking, that you know what's coming. All right? Now that's not going to happen today. All right? But um, God knew what was going to happen when he set everything in motion. But in order for you to have the ability to choose, the potential for evil is there. All right? God did not put evil in anyone. Let's just be very clear. All right? God predicted of Abram, of Abraham. Genesis 18, 18 through 19, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abram that which he hath spoken of him. Elijah the prophet made the following prediction in 2 Kings 8:10, And Elijah said unto him, Go say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover, howbeit the Lord hath showed me that he, sh that he shall surely die. His eyes see all things, folks, all things. 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf in the behalf of those in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him herein thou hast done foolishly therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars Jeremiah the prophet recorded the Lord saying Jeremiah 16:17 for mine eyes are upon their ways they are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. God sees everything we're doing, folks. Let's just be very clear about this. If you think you're engaged in something and God's not seeing it, he's seeing it. All right? There's nothing that you do wrong that God does not see. Let's just understand that. The psalmist wrote, Psalm 94, 9. He that planted the ear shall not hear. He that formed thine eye shall he not see. He that, Psalm 94, 9. He that planted... Psalm 94, 9. He that planted the ear shall he not hear. He that formed the eye shall he not see. His knowledge is denied by the wicked. Scripture informs us that the wicked question the nature and extent of God's knowledge. They question how God is able to know everything. Psalm 73, 11 through 12. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly 
who prosper in the world, they increase in riches. They believe God does not see their sin. Psalm 94, 7 says, Yet they say the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. God knows what evil people think. Job 34, 25 says, Therefore he knoweth their works, and he overturneth them in the night, so that they are destroyed. God is perfect in judgment, folks. Only a God who is perfect in knowledge would be competent to judge humanity. The Bible speaks of that day of judgment when the Lord judges all humanity. For God to judge righteously, he must know all things. 2 Peter 3, 7 says, But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, kept in store, reserves unto fire against that day of, reserved unto fire against that day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. When people realize they have to stand one day before an all-knowing God, this should cause them to evaluate the way they live, their, the way they live their lives. Judgment is coming, and people need to live in the light of it, Jesus said. Matthew 12, 37 says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Humanity should take the warning seriously, because God knows everything. The warnings that he gives mankind need to be taken seriously, since he knows what will happen in the future. Any warning he gives in our is any warning he gives is for our benefit. There is comfort for the believer. Let's go. Matthew 6, 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask them. The Lord searches every heart. 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9 says, And thou, Solomon my son, know, know thou the God of thy fathers, and serve him with a perfect heart, and with a willing mind, for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations and of the thoughts. If thou will seek him, he will, you, he will find him, he will find thee. But if thou, will for, if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. The believer is secure in this knowledge. The believer may rest secure in the knowledge that God knows everything about them. Nothing about us will take God by surprise. No one can tell him anything that would cause him to cast us out of his presence. He thoroughly knows us. And that was from Don Stewart. God knows everything. Uh, he is an omniscient. 1 John 3.20 says, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Summary. As we examine what the scripture has to say about the extent of the knowledge of God, several things become clear. First, God is the God of infinite knowledge. There is nothing that he is not aware of. God is not like human beings in his knowledge. He cannot learn anything he does not need to be taught and does not make mistakes. Consequently, he is able to righteously judge humanity, for he knows the thoughts as well as deeds. His omniscience also allows him to predict the future. He knows everything that will happen before it occurs. There is a great security for the believer in the omniscience of God. He knows the needs of each believer, and he promises to meet those needs. All those who have put their trust in him are comforted by the thought of God's omniscience. All right, got a question for you. What does God's attribute of omniscience mean for the believer? 
In short, it means God knows our sorrows and our failures. He knows the real us and he loves us anyway. Uh, see John 3.16 to Peter 3.9. Dear Lord, I thank you, Lord, for giving us this time of learning. I thank you for those who will watch the videos, Lord, and I pray that you would use the videos to bless, edify, and edify believers. And in Jesus' name, I thank you for it, Lord. Amen.